Hi guys, we are going to be making this awesome design by Parker on the Porch. This is the 5 by 7 hoop size top zip uh, pencil bag that I made. And I am hacking the bag by putting glitter in it. So I'm going to show you how you can add glitter to a bag. I'm going to show you how to add it to this bag, but the process is pretty much the same for um, whatever bag you're doing. So this is the front, this is the back, and then we have glitter in the vinyl, the clear vinyl. So I'm going to show you how you can do this. And some of the things we're going to be using, um, you're going to need 12 gauge clear vinyl. You're going to need one sheet of lightweight interfacing. That's what I use. You don't have to use it. It's optional. I'm using fold over elastic. You don't have to do this step either. It's this little part right here. You do not have to add this to the bag. But if you do, I used fold over elastic and I used one D swivel lobster clasp to put that on. So this is optional as well. I used some glitter. You're going to want glitter. I put some sequins in here too. So I just have some sequins. That's um, completely up to you on what you want to put in here. And then I use this fabric. You guys have been liking to know what fabric I used. I went ahead and used these two from this fabric pack. It's this fabric pack. It's from um, um, Walmart. And it is called Mermaids. SPR Mermaids. Okay. So I know it's going to be backwards on there, but that's what it is. It was just a pack from Walmart. Okay. So I will meet you at our machine and we will get started. I'll show you how to add glitter to this bag. Okay guys, I'm on my machine. I have my five by seven hoop. I have one sheet of tearaway on here and I have the design loaded. So we are ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the first step, which is the placement stitches directly onto my stabilizer. I will come back and show you what that looks okay, like. Okay guys, that's what your placement stitches look like right there. It shows you a lot of things. It's gonna show you the size of the fabric that we need. But the next step is placing our zipper. So we're gonna work with this line in particular right here. You need to take your zipper and you need to place the edge right next to this line. Now you can determine which side your zipper opens from. If you want it to open this way, put your pull on this side. If you want it the other way, flip it around and put your zipper pull on the other side. You want to line your zipper right next. I'm going to move my pull out a little bit more. You want it right next to this line, just like that, all the way across. So get it just next to it all the way across. Now the thing about these top zip zipper bags is you have to get your zipper placed pretty exact. You don't have a lot, a lot of leeway on here because what's going to happen in the next step is it's going to stitch a line right here and then it's going to jump the zipper teeth and it's going to do a line here, tacking your zipper down to your stabilizer. Now the space between those two lines is not very big. So if you have this not placed right, then it's going to miss your zipper. The stitching is going to miss your zipper and you're going to have to try again. Okay, so once you have it right next to that line without going over the line, then you can go ahead and tape right here and tape on the other side or you can hold it. I'm just going to hold it. Like I said, it's just going to do two lines. Make sure your pull and the ending is over your placement stitches right here else your um, zipper won't work either. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch it and I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. Our zipper is all tacked down. It went ahead and did the line down here and the line up here, so we are good to go. We're gonna go ahead and measure all of our fabric right now. So the next thing you need is this square right here from where your zipper, where your zipper teeth um, start right here down to this line. This line right here, this square is how big of a piece of clear vinyl you need. So that's this right here. And um, I would use 12 gauge or higher. That's the thickness. 
Um, I wouldn't do super high because then it's really thick and it's hard to turn, but you need at least 12 gauge, a minimum of 12 gauge to put it on these bags. Okay, so I have this cut here. I bought it at Joann's. You can also go to mypunkbroidery.com and you can just type in 12 gauge vinyl and it comes up and you can see it there. And they also have some like different colors and stuff, I believe. I'm not sure what gauge it is, but I do know they have some different other colors of clear vinyl. Okay, so you're going to need one piece of this. We are putting glitter in this bag. So for the normal bag, you just need one piece, but we're going to be putting glitter inside of it as it was requested for a video. So you need two pieces. Just make two pieces of clear vinyl from your zipper down. You can make it bigger down here. We will trim it after it stitches around, but this is the piece you need right there. So just take your ruler and measure from your zipper down past this line a little bit, and then that would be your width right here from stitch line, the placement line to the placement line. Okay, so you need two pieces of those for this project if you're adding glitter or sequins. Then you need two pieces of fabric that measure from this bottom one right here. From here to here, you need it a little bit extra because we're gonna be flipping the fabric. So I've already cut mine right here. I'm gonna use this and you need two pieces. One's gonna be for the front that you'll see and the other one will be inside your bag, part of the liner. So the way we do this, if we place it on that line, it stitches and then we fold it over. So you need to make sure you have a big enough piece that can make it past these stitch lines with the fold over, okay? So take your rule and just measure your placement stitches from here to here. I normally measure from that stitch line down here and then I add an inch for the flip. You don't probably need quite that, but then it's not so hard to place and it stinks when you place it and then you don't make it past the stitch lines. Well, then you have to tear out the stitches and do it again, which is not fun. So um, you need two pieces of that. So I have two pieces here. Now the other fabric you need is the fabric that's gonna be your liner that you will end up seeing through this spot right here. So I'm gonna use this fabric right here. I went ahead and measured for the whole bag because you're gonna need from here to here and here to here and you need two pieces of that. So from the whole point, the top of your bag up here all the way down and then from side to side you need two pieces of that. One is going to be the back of your bag and one is going to be the liner that shows through right here. Okay, so I have all of that cut. Now, the only piece that I add interfacing to is the back because you don't have a front liner, so you don't really need to add any to that. So what I do is I take Pellin lightweight interfacing. If you want your fabric to be thicker, then go ahead and use a medium weight. It doesn't have to be Pellin. It can be any type of interfacing. It's just, few. I have fusible interfacing. And the way that works is it just has a rougher side and a smooth side. You go ahead and take the wrong side of your fabric. You place the rough side of the interfacing down on the wrong side and then you iron and it adheres to your fabric and it just makes your fabric thicker so your bag doesn't feel so flimsy. So it just, and you can add one sheet, you can add two sheets, you can add medium weight, you can add fusible, fusible fleece if you want it more like a quilted, like thicker bag. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use, just whatever you prefer. I use one sheet of lightweight fusible interfacing on the front and the back of all of my bags where I use woven fabric. This technically doesn't have a front because we're using clear vinyl, so you only have to put it on the back. So I have that ready to go as well. So we are ready to go. I'm going to bring you over to the machine and I will show you what we do next. Okay, I'm back on my machine. The next step is going to go ahead and tack down your clear vinyl. It's going to stitch around this top square right here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a straight edge on your clear vinyl. You're going to place it up here next to your zipper, making sure that you are past these stitch lines right here. You can be really far. It doesn't matter. We can trim it after the fact, but you do need to have a big enough piece that it at least covers all of these stitch lines right here. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the next step. It's going to tack this piece down, and then I will show you what we do next. Okay, guys, so this is what it looks right 
like right there. Now, normally we would just trim this and move on to the next step, but we're gonna be placing some glitter between two pieces of vinyl. So this is where we would do this step. So what you need is another piece of clear vinyl. You're gonna set the clear vinyl the same way you set the first piece. You're gonna get it all lined up right next to your zipper up here. Get your straight edge. Make sure you have a big enough piece that it passes all your stitch lines. Mine's cutting this kind of close right there, but it is there, so that's fine. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it back on your machine. And then we need to back up our steps because now it went ahead and moved to step four, but we need to run step three again. So the way that you do that is on your machine, you're gonna have a needle with a plus or a minus, find that and press it. It's gonna open this other screen and this screen allows you to jump stitches. These plus and minuses let you jump this many stitches forward with the plus sign or backwards with the minus sign within the step you're in. Now, we actually want to jump an entire step, not individual stitches, so because we want to get back to step three. We're on step four. We want to rerun step three. So then you go to these spools. Find the spools with a plus or a minus. If you want to back up a step, go ahead and do the minus. It's going to bring us back to step three. Now, we want to rerun step three, so that's what we want. So that's how you get there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this way it runs, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run it, and then when it gets over, it runs from the, the top front over and then all the way over and up. We're gonna actually stop the machine when it gets to that side. So let me just see if I can do this while it runs. So go ahead and hit start. Know where your start and stop is. So we're gonna just let it run. I normally don't let my machine run, but this is kind of how I hold it. We're nowhere near it. Now it runs kind of slow on this top step because it's doing a double stitch right there. But once it gets to the side, it's going to run a lot faster. So be ready to stop it. Okay, so it's running there. It's running there. I have my finger on the stop button. I actually want to stop it when it gets to the edge. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use my scissors to cut the thread on my machine. It just cuts the thread. Okay, now I'm gonna take it out of my machine and I will meet you back over at my desk with my tripod. Okay guys, here we are. This is what it looks like so far. Now we didn't let it go all the way because we didn't wanna close it yet. We wanna add some glitter in here and you just want a small opening right there. So there is a small opening right there. You could take some like tweezers or something and just kind of try to hold it open. I am gonna use glitter, so you have glitter right here. This is also where you can put sequins in there. You can put all sorts of stuff in here and it's gonna seal it in. So I'm gonna use this little note card. You can use other things. I know there's tons of different ways of doing this. This is just what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna cut part of this because it's so long. I'm gonna have the opening and I'm gonna just place this little card like this. I'm gonna kind of tilt it. I don't really need these tweezers. Okay, and now first I'll do my sequence. I'm just gonna put them in there. And I'm gonna tip my bag. You see how it goes in there? Now we could add some more if we want. I'm only gonna do that many. Now this glitter is fine. So I'm gonna just go ahead and open it. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna tilt it and I have the opening in the card, just kind of makes it go in there. So you could put as little or as much as you want. And I'm just gonna kind of shake it down, getting it in here and pushing it over. Now you probably can get it to move a little bit better once um, your bag is all the way sealed. You can use your fingers and shove it or whatever. You can also get like a straw right now if you wanted, or the back of this and you can kind of push things down as well. Let me get my, now remember this is glitter though, so it's gonna stick to whatever you put in here. So look, see there's glitter on here. So 
you love and hate glitter all at the same time. I'm gonna go and just pound it. And so that's how you get the glitter in there. We will shake it around after and scoot it around, but that's how you get it in there, okay? And now you have two pieces. Now I'm gonna bring you back to the machine so we can stitch the rest of it closed, and then we'll move on with the rest of our bag, okay? Now I might have put too much because you won't see the fabric as much either. So you might want to put less than I did. But that's how you do it. So I'm going to bring you back to the machine and then we will go from there. Okay, I am back on my machine. Now, if you want to see your fabric a little bit more, I would put less. I just dumped a bunch in there so it's going to be super glittery. Um, just do less if you want to see just some of it. Okay, so I'm actually going to back up a few stitches now. I cut right here. I'm going to back up to like right here so it reseals right there. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to here. Now, I'm just going to go back some steps. So this will take me back 10 steps at a time. Stitches, steps. This is going to take me back 10 stitches at a time on step three okay so i'm going to put you over there while i push this so you can see it just back up some you can back up by one you can back up by 10 or you can back up by 100 and then you or 500 and you can do the same going forward like if you wanted to jump forward but that's good enough so i'm just going to go ahead and finish stitching this one part and i'll just leave it recording so you can see it it's just going to go over this corner again sealing it all the way up okay now your glitter is sealed in there okay so i'm going to meet you back at the tripod and i'll show you what we do next okay we were back over here now what we're going to do this is what it looks like it's all sealed in there what we're going to do is we're going to trim some of this extra vinyl you don't want a lot of this vinyl especially two layers of it on this bottom part of your bag you don't want to cut too close to the stitches because you don't want this vinyl to pull out, but you want to get it a little bit closer just so you don't have this extra bulk, bulk in the bottom of your bag. Okay, so just there, just at the edge. Okay, so now what we're doing next is it's the, the normal way of making this bag. We're going to go ahead and flip this over. We're going to add our liner pieces, our the bottom pieces so I want to make sure I know which way I want it to go I want it to look like the scale so I want it to be this direction not this direction when I do it okay so you're gonna flip this over this is the top of the inside of your bag so I still want it to go this direction let me write I'll put hearts the directions you want your fabric to go on both sides just so you know if you have directional fabric which way you want them to go it's always a good idea if you're not certain, especially because we do flip, we flip on here. Okay, so I want my scales to be like this. So what we're going to do is take the right side of our fabric. We're going to place it down like this. Here's the line we're lining up to. We're going to take it right next to this line. And then you're going to just pull it over a tiny bit. And then you're going to tape. You're underneath your hoop, so you have to tape. We're gonna tape. You don't have to tape it super good, just so that it's not gonna flip on itself. Okay, so we are good to go right there, and then you're gonna flip your hoop over, and you're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna place these at the same time. I'm using the same fabric, so we ultimately want it to look like this when it's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the right side of my fabric, flip it over. We're going along this line right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get lined up next to it. I'm gonna pull down, make sure your fabric goes past your placement stitches on both sides. I'm gonna tape it down. You could just hold this at the machine because you're this is the top, but I'm gonna I'll just tape it. Now what the next step's gonna do is it's just gonna stitch one line right here and then we're gonna fold these over. So you wanna make sure you have enough fabric when it's, it stitches this line that you can pull it over and still get past these bottom stitch lines, okay? So I'm gonna go over the machine and run the next step and I'm gonna make sure that I can stitch one line here from here and the back and still make our fabric come over okay so when you put this on your machine since you have stuff underneath make sure once you put it on the machine you kind of look underneath to make sure that the fabric didn't move and then it's all still in place so i'm gonna go stitch that line i'll come back and show you okay guys that line stitched right there this is the top of your hoop this is the bottom it's stitched there and there 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip our hoop. This is the bottom of your hoop. You're going to go ahead and pull the tape off. And now you're going to pull this fabric down like this. You know, you can see I can get past these stitch lines. If you cannot get past these stitch lines, it means your fabric wasn't big enough. You need to take a seam ripper and just pull these stitches out right here. And then just try it again. Just get a bigger piece of fabric or move it in a different place. If you have lots of excess fabric right here, I don't really have a lot of excess, but say, for example, you were trying to match up a pattern or something, go ahead and trim this a little bit. You don't want extra bulk in here that you don't need, but mine's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold this over now. We're on the underneath of our hoop. You're going to tape it down. Tape this side down. Okay, so you're good to go. You can put a third piece if you want just to keep it tight. Okay, then flip your hoop over and you can do the exact same thing up here. Go ahead and move your tape. Oh, my tape stuck to that vinyl. Okay, so go ahead and pull it down. Go ahead and tape this down or you can hold it. I like to hold this piece on my machine because I want it straight and to stay tight but um you could tape it too if you're not a holder you can definitely tape it okay so we're going to go over to our machine and the next step is going to stitch just this curve tacking down the front piece and the liner piece at the same time so i'm going to go ahead and stitch the very next step and i will come back and show you what it looks like okay guys this is what it looks like it went ahead and stitched this down and this is what the back looks like. It went ahead and stitched that down as well. If you have lots of excess fabric and it's not taped down right here, I would trim it because a lot of times that's where people get these um, their fabric folded into the next steps and then it messes the bag up. So don't have lots of excess fabric just hanging there. Why don't you trim it now if you have any? Okay, so now we need to put the back of our bag on the front of our bag. Now, whenever we do that, our first step is to open the zipper. You always have to open the zipper here because you have to turn through your zipper. And if you don't open this, then your bag is ruined. There is ways of saving it, but um, you just don't want to have to do it. So open your zipper far enough over that you can turn your bag through the hole, but not so far that you go pat like too far past these stitch lines right here. You want to be over on this side with enough room for the foot of your machine to get by here. So don't open it too far because if you open it too far, the foot of your machine is going to hit it. Okay. So this is probably good enough. Now this is where you add anything you want to your bag. If you want stuff hanging off of your bag, you always add it right before you stitch, you put the back of your bag on. So I'm going to go ahead and add a lobster clasp. This is a D swivel lobster clasp. I'm going to put it on there with fold over elastic. This is like a pretty mermaid fold over elastic. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it through like this, folding it over so it holds. And then you can place it anywhere along this outer placement line because the next step is going to go around and around on this several times. So I'm going to go ahead and place it like this. Remember you need to add your hardware on the inside of your bag. Once you flip your bag it will be on the outside but when you're doing this step it has to be on the inside. Remember anything that's on the outside of these stitch lines is going to get cut off. So you definitely want it on the inside. Now Depending on how long you want your fold over elastic will determine on how far you place this on this line. If you want it shorter, you'd place it over here. If you want it longer, you'd place it over here. The only um, restraint on this is that you can't have it too close because the foot of your machine, when it's stitching down this line, will hit your metal. So you gotta have it long enough that it won't hit the metal. Okay, so I'm going to place mine like right about there. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape it down. Okay, that's all I'm going to add to my bag. If you want to add anything else, go ahead. This is the exact step where you would add other things. You would add, um, some people put little tags over here. They put their labels of their businesses, the tags hanging off the side. This is when you would do it. Remember, place it on the inside. And then if you wanted to do straps, you would be placing it right now. 
you'd place it up here right now um, before you put the back of your bag on. I'm just gonna do this for now, okay? So now I'm gonna take the back of my bag. Now the back of my bag has that, stay, that interfacing on it, so I know it's this piece. If you have directional fabric, make sure you're placing it the right way. You're gonna do right sides, facing down, so just know your directions if you have to have it a certain way, but right sides facing down over all your placement stitches from the top all the way to the bottom and side to side. That's what you're going for right now, and your zipper's open. Make sure your zipper's open, okay? Just making sure I'm getting past all my stitch lines and I am I kind of cut this a little bit normally I'm not frugal on my fabric so I have lots of leeway this one's kind of tight which I don't like because then you have to be really precise okay so I'm gonna go back to the machine I'm gonna run the next step it's gonna stitch all the way around this and I'll come back and show you Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and enclosed the bag. Look how close I was. This is why I make my fabric really big so I don't have to sweat it and it was hard to place that. So I don't know why I cut it so small this time. But anyway, so now we are gonna flip our bag to the back side and we're gonna place our liner. Now the piece, I'm gonna turn it this way because this is the front so you know which way your fabric's going. So the piece that you're placing right now is gonna be the piece that shows through your clear vinyl. So you might wanna be more um, exact on when you're placing things and that if there's a specific thing that you specific thing that you want to see show through there, this is where you're going to want to line it up. Mine are just mermaids going all over the place, so it doesn't really matter if mine's going up or down, but you're going to take the right side of your fabric, you're going to place it face down over all these stitch lines, okay? And what you're going to see is whatever fits in this square right here is what you'll see if you didn't put like tons of glitter like me. I have a feeling we're not going to see very much of mine because I put lots and lots of glitter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place it like this. That's making sure that I hit all of my stitch lines. Okay, now you're going to want to leave a little bit extra down here, more than up here, because we're going to close a hole and I use a little bit of the fabric to do that. Okay. okay, so you're just gonna go ahead and tape this once you have it where you want it. Okay, and you go place this back on your machine once this is the underneath of your hoop. So once you place this, make sure to look underneath and make sure your fabric didn't move or anything. And then go ahead and stitch the very last stitch step and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what the front of our hoop looks like. This is what the underneath of our hoop looks like. I always make sure to look at the underneath of your hoop before you start just tearing it off. I get in a hurry and sometimes I just whip it off the hoop and then I'm like, oh my goodness, it didn't stitch all the way. And then I have to go to my sewing machine and stitch it. So just make sure that it went ahead and stitched around, leaving a little opening right here, okay? If you are good to go, go ahead and take it off your hoop because we are done stitching anyways. I take my stabilizer off. Okay. Now I go ahead and I cut from this side. I have all this tape on here. Sorry, I'm taking it off. It'll just get cut off, but it's bugging me. Okay. So take some scissors, kind of some heavy duty scissors because you're going to be cutting through your excess zipper and stuff. Now you can see where the stitch lines stop here. I go ahead and cut at an angle without cutting my stitch line. And then I turn and I cut all the way around the bag. When you get to where the stitches end on this side, I get to the end and then I turn the other direction like that, okay? So there we go. Now you have your liners here. Locate the hole 
the holes right there. These two pieces are going to be used to close your hole. These other pieces of fabric can be cut off. It's just going to add bulk. So I kind of hold these two pieces up. Now make sure when you do this you don't cut at an angle because your bag's all folded weird. You want to make sure you don't cut any of these stitches. You're just trying to get some of this extra bulk out of here. But don't get too close because you'd have to start over if you cut your stitches. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and flip through this hole right here. Just be kind of gentle. It shouldn't be too thick. You have that clear vinyl in here, but the rest is just woven fabric. I just gently push corners through. Let me see like this. You're trying not to rip any of your, this is the most fragile spot when you're turning right now, is this spot right here where you, you could tear. Um, you can glue that in the end if you do tear. I have torn before. But um, just kind of go slow and pull it through gently so you don't tear it. But it can be fixed if you do, so don't get discouraged. This clear vinyl has two layers, so it's a little harder to turn. Okay, I'm gonna... I use this turning system thing for sewing to help get my corners out. You could use a chopstick. I'm gonna use my fingers too. Be kind of gentle because this is woven fabric. You don't want to go through and put a hole in the fabric either. But you just want to kind of get the corners out somewhat. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of flatten it out a little bit. Okay, so this is where you have to close the hole. It's time to close the hole. So on one side you'll have these stitch lines and I kind of go along with those stitch lines. I just get my fabrics kind of put together and straight like that. And then I take these little wonder clips and I just kind of clip it in place so we're, we stay straight. Now there's a few ways to close this hole. You can close it with a ladder stitch with just a sewing needle and do a ladder stitch. If you want to know how to do a ladder stitch, you can Google it and it will come up and show you. It's just somebody with a needle sewing back and forth um, with thread to close it. You can use this peel and stick. I did another video on one of the bags that shows how to use this. This is peel and stick. You really just pull a piece of the tape the length of that. You push it down, one side sticky right now, and then you pull the other layer off and then you just sit and squeeze it and it closes it. You don't need any heat or anything. It's really easy to use. I use this fabric tack glue right here. It's clear glue. It's really fast. It's inexpensive because you don't use very much and I just do this. I'm going to show you how to do it this way. I just prefer the glue. It's just easy. Although this one's almost empty so I have to wait for all this glue to come down. There you go. I just go along the stitch lines. new bottle okay I just make sure it's where I want it if there's any excess I just rub it okay and I just do that it um, doesn't leave any hard residue or anything it's really a good glue for this purpose um, it's clear it doesn't leave a hard spot at the bottom and it dries with three in between like three and five minutes so I really like it Okay, and you just do that. See how fast that is? Now while this is drying, like I said, I'll leave it on there for three to five minutes. I go ahead and I pull out all this stabilizer. Okay, this, there's, this is just one sheet of tear away. There's other things people use. Some people don't like using the tear away here because it's, it's you know kind of difficult to um, get it all off. But I really just pull right here and get the zipper open. Now, if you didn't open your zipper, you wouldn't be able to open right here. That's why it's important to open the zipper. But I'm just going to go ahead, this top portion, you'll have some placement stitches here that you just tear or cut, whichever. If you feel uncomfortable tearing it, go ahead and just cut it. But you're going to want to get all of this off. Now, usually this piece down here, once you get it like started, now just see if I can get it started real quick. There you go at the edge. 
You don't want to push too hard because you're going to leave a mark in your clear vinyl. I always have a hard time getting it started. You want to get it pulled out. Something pokey would probably be better, but there you go. Okay, so when I get this started, it actually almost tears out like perforating. See how it's coming out? If you're really slow and gentle and you pull along the edge, mine comes all the way out in one a big piece until you get to this because there's stitch lines right here so it won't stay in one piece up here. But you could pretty much get the whole thing out really easily and there's no residue there because I pulled it really slowly so it pulled it with the perforation part. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of this other. So I was going to leave and clean it up, but it's pretty much done other than the top. Okay, so look how easy that cleaned up. Now you have a few little strings on the top that you can cut just to make it better as well. Okay, okay. so it really doesn't take that long to get the stabilization out of there. I'm going to trim up some of these little, this is those jump stitches that I just pulled. I'm going to trim them a little nicer. Just don't cut any knots that you see because that's tying the strings off. Okay, one more piece of stabilizer. Okay, there we go. That is all clean and out. Okay, so now I'm going to just take this off. This is the bottom inside of your bag. It's all, see there's no hole, it's not open. It's already dry enough to turn it. It's not a big deal, it's super fast straight, it's clean, looks great. Okay, so now that we have all our stabilizer off, now we can turn our bag through this hole. Okay, so I'm just going to put my thumb down in here and I'm just going to turn. I'm going to go to the other side, put my thumb in there, and just kind of push it through and then get everything turned. Now you are going to want to get your corners really nice this time because we're done turning. So you want to get it really nice. Okay, so I'm going to get that hole. Okay, that one. You're just going to smooth it down a little because you have all that vinyl folding and stuff. Okay. Okay, here you go. Here's your bag with glitter and sequins in it. So you can see that I put so much in here that you can't really see the design behind there. So put less glitter. Unless you just want a bag that's just full of glitter, which is also really pretty. It's probably hard to see, it's kind of cute. Originally I picked the gold and the little sequins because I thought it would be like sand with the mermaids, but you can't really see the mermaids on here. You can see them right here, which is cool. So keep that in mind when you're dumping glitter in there. You might want to do a little less than me. Um, but super cute, that's how you do it. There's your snap tat or your swivel cloth lap lobster cloth so you can clip this onto bags and stuff here's your opening you can see that it's all lined okay hopefully that helps you guys put glitter now you can do the same method on several bags it doesn't have to be this bag this is just the pencil one um, you could do this in lots of bags. Just know that you have to rerun a step and then stop and just shove some glitter in there and it will work for pretty much any bag that you're putting it on, okay? So um, please go ahead and um, put any of your questions in the comments and I will get back to you. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do that. Go ahead and do a thumbs up if you liked this tutorial and it helped you. And then click on the little um, bell if you want to be notified when the next video comes out. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you're looking for any of these particular products that I use, go ahead under this video. There's a see more or show more. It has all the links to this bag, this design, as well as other things. So um, 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helps all the people that were wanting to do glitter in a bag. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.